No, because I get the youngsters. They're struggling. James Wiseman. Are they, go though? Back. James Wiseman's going back down to the G League. Okay. Kuminga and Moody haven't been able to play through their struggles, but I thought they took a step forward last night. Now let's see them do it again against Phoenix Wednesday night and then the New York Knicks on Friday. And they've got to become more consistent, right? But this whole thing about Steve Curry, uh, it, we're back to this again. They just won a championship four months ago. Four months ago, folks, they won a championship. When all, when a lot of you people, the same people who say Steve Kerr can't develop, a lot of you people wanted to blow up the team for Ben Simmons and Pascal Siakam. Oh, I seen it. I got the receipts. Oh, I seen it all. And now we're back to Steve Kerr can't develop talent. I, I don't, I don't, I don't know why I'm starting to show off like this, yeah. but it just bugs me. It's like appreciate one of the great coaches in NBA history. Appreciate one of the best coaches we've ever seen in the Bay Area, whether it's football, baseball, or basketball. When he's gone. God, it's good. You want to talk about replacing Stephen Curry? Uh huh. It's gonna be it's gonna be tough replacing Steve Curry. Can I ask you a question? Like, wh why do we do this in sports where we just think every player is gonna just they're gonna develop and the line's gonna go straight upward, mm -hmm. like like you're going up a mountain. Like yep. that's not how development works. B, let me give you a, an example. Do you remember a guy from Tennessee Chattanooga by the name of Terrell Owens? I do. Okay. Do you remember what one of the big knocks was on Terrell Owens early in his career, especially? Couldn't catch. I mean, he dropped a million balls. He dropped a million balls. Lost in the sauce of that great, uh, and, and I don't know if you were there at Levi's, but they actually said 88 on the scoreboard, but it was yeah. 98. The 98 wild card game right, 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 where right, he right. had one of the most famous catches of all time. Does anyone go back in time and remember he dropped two touchdowns in the sun? I think he dropped five passes in all. Yeah, but two in the end zone. Yeah, two in the end zone. Remember, he kept going like, I can't see right. the ball. Right. And, and everyone was like, what is going on? But what did he do? He came through with a huge catch. The point that I'm going at here, we all assume that development is a straight line yeah. going up, when in reality, development in any profession mm -hmm. is up and down and yeah. erratic at times. Can you take a quantum leap forward on certain areas? Absolutely. Yeah. But the grind of getting better, whether you're an electrician, whether you're a radio host, it is up and down. Look, I, I just look at myself, right? And I don't try to pretend like I'm on the same level of an NBA player, but I'm using it as a microcosm. I worked eight gazillion night shows and weekend shows, and a lot of the crap I tried and experimented with and was trying to find my voice, it wasn't good. Heck, people might even think I'm no good right now, and that's fine. But at some point, you start to push through and then you start to show some incremental gains. Not every day are you going to get better. Not every day are you going to hit a grand slam. I look at the youngsters that the Warriors have right now, and I've had a full epiphany on this. And I think deleting social media off my phone is a step forward. But they don't even need all three guys to help them this year. No. If one and a half of these guys, and what I mean by yeah. one and a half, if one of them can be a defender and the yeah. other one can be a guy who you can contribute on both ends of the floor consistently three out of four nights, right. The Warriors are going to be just fine. B, is DiVincenzo going to play for the time being? Yep. Okay. You've got your six. Well, you know. Uh, Jermichael Green is going to be the small ball five with the second unit. Steve Kerr said it last night saying, look, I have done him no favors so far. Okay. And I think the favors is he played him at the four alongside James Wiseman. Now he's going to play the five. Can we go play the four or Lamb? They're both interchangeable yeah. three slash fours. So DiVincenzo and Green will play. So the point being is that we've got the six guys. Looney. And then, obviously, Draymond and Clay and Wiggins and Steph and Poole. You throw them in. That's six. Seven is Jermichael Green. Eight is Dante DiVincenzo. Do we really think they're going 11 deep for the remainder of the no, year? they're not. Especially in the playoffs. So that's my point. They're going so, eight deep in the playoffs. So I watched that game last night, and my epiphany was, dude, if Kaminga just keeps doing what he's doing, he's going to do some knucklehead things. He's going to be fine. How about that outlet pass from Steph Curry to Kaminga where he just yaks it in the middle of the floor? Then yeah. I watched Moody, and I'm like, his on-ball defense, it's coming around. He's going to be fine. He knocked down a couple of threes. If the two of those guys can show a little bit of promise this year and get into the rotation, Warriors are fine. Warriors. They're fine. It starts and ends with the top six. And no doubt. No doubt. And let's be real. The Sacramento game, they were up four late in the fourth quarter. Sacramento got any shot they wanted. Exactly. And there was a lid on the basket for the Golden State Warriors, and they lost that game. So you can blame all the young guys. You can blame the second unit. These losses sometimes come down to the starters, to the money men, to the guys who's making $30 million, $40 million a year, $50 million a year. And so uh, when it comes to the playoffs, we're not – nobody's going to be – 
bitching and moaning about, oh, man, Kamika those five minutes, man, really lost. No, 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 no. It's going to come down to crunch time. It's going to come down to the second half. And so so you brought up a question to start off the show regarding Jordan Poole. And I think it's a fair one to just think about, like, oh, right. you know, he, he does play a little better when he's starting or and he's empowered. So let's hear from Steve Kerr on this. Yeah. And then I'll let, I'll let you continue. Yeah. Here's Steve Kerr on. He was asked about whether or not Jordan Poole should come off the bitch. I don't notice... The approach, I think the game is, is easier for him when he starts for other reasons. I, I talked about pregame. He can play off of staff. And he's generally got a weaker defender on him because the, the best defender is going to be on staff. And he can play off of Draymond and Loon with their screening. And so the game's easier for for him when he starts, for sure. And he was asked real quick yeah. to ask if Jordan Poole can influence other players. That's the idea. Again, I mean, we're looking at this from a big picture standpoint. This was a good night for us. Uh, last night wasn't a good night for us. And um, there'll probably be plenty more ups and downs as we go. But as long as we're trending in the right direction and correcting mistakes, then, uh, then I'll be pleased and we can continue to, to get better. Let's preface everything by the Spurs stink. Because I do think that that Third can, worst can cloud your judgment, right? Third worst defense in the league they had just lost five or six coming in yeah they beat a shorthanded milwaukee team so they've lost six to seven after a five and two start hey, everybody's going crazy after seven games the spurs stink Monte, i do this for a living and i don't pretend to be league pass guy right. there's not one guy that i recognize on that team listen listen i watch league pass there ain't san antonio spurs games being fired up i'll tell you that right now <laughs> uh you know i like sean elliott down there on the color on the be the color analyst Spurs stick. They yeah. will not be utilized on league pass. Exactly. I so, can guarantee that. So we're going to preface everything we say. What I will say is this. Uh, everyone's going to look at the 30-something points that Jordan Poole dropped. I thought the ball was moving a lot better just as a team, not just Jordan Poole. Secondarily, he actually showed more competency and a willing to defend. I saw him off ball trying yeah. to defend. I saw him on ball being more aware of where the screen was. Right. Now, if that trend continues for weeks on end, I'll right. be open to having different discussions so, regarding the lineup. But he's got to show me defensive effort right. consistently because they will take a huge step back in terms of their backcourt defense so, if they try to just start Steph and pull together. So how do we channel that with short and pull coming off the bench? It's a great I, question. With the second unit. How can he channel that same energy? Well, and and look, I do think there is something to what Steve Kerr said about playing with Steph Curry and Wiggins. You're not the gravity that Steph Curry creates 100%. is going to create everything for everybody 100%. else. But I, I, when I look at the two games, and I, I was actually open to this last night. I was watching the game mm -hmm. and I was thinking about it because the question was looming. It's inevitable, yeah. even though Steve Kerr said it twice now in a six days six days span that Jordan Poole's not starting, Clay Thompson's starting. But I do admit that Clay Thompson's struggling. He shot hunting. And when I see his Instagram post talking about, hey, man, you guys keep doubting me. I'm going to come back. And I'm like, we get it, Clay. You've already come back. Yeah. You came back after a 941-day hiatus. You came back. You helped win the championship. I get that. He is struggling right now. He is shot hunting right now. He's taking bad shots. Now, I like a lot of the good. I like a lot of the mm -hmm. looks he does have, but he's short on everything because his legs is not there. Mm. You didn't come in in shape. You know, you didn't come to training camp in shape. You didn't play 505. I get that. That's going to take time. But I was open to saying, okay, what would it look like if Jordan Poole started? Well, I think about Clay Thompson coming off the bench, and I'm saying the second unit may be worse with Clay Thompson than it is Jordan Poole. Why do you say that? Because Jordan Poole at least can handle the rock. Uh huh. He is willingly able to facilitate, and he can play alongside defense. In. So his first step is quicker. Mm -hmm. His handle's quicker. Mm -hmm. He can get to the rim. He can create foul shots for others and himself. Yeah, I'm and he can you. create the three. Clay Thompson right now, let's be real, is probably a three and a D guy. And I, I, I say the D lightly because I get his defense has a bit all that. But he's a three-point shooter who can shoot the mid-range. But he can't dribble. He can't facilitate no, for others. No. I'm not saying he's he's just he hasn't done it. That's who Clay Thompson is. Well, so if you put him with the second unit, yeah. that unit becomes worse and he's seeing the top defender. Yeah. And all of a sudden he's not getting a rock. That's a good point. That's a good point on the top defender. I hadn't even considered that. Well, like, let's go back to JP for a second. I'll get to Clay in, in a right. moment. So like JP, what he did last night, and Hardaway said it so eloquently at the at the end of the game, he goes. Dude, he took a couple of dribbles and was going straight to the rim. His first two baskets were layups. Right. That's what he was saying. And I was like, wow, he's right. And, like, he, he was more decisive in his movement, I mm -hmm. felt like. And to me, whether that's because he started or because it is irrelevant. He needs right. to carry that over no matter where he's at on where the floor, who's on there with him. I felt like he, he was more decisive. But it's hard for me to not look past 
he did some of the best work out there when Steph Curry was out no there. No doubt. Who's, right. and, and who's not, though? No, no, but yeah. that's, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, right. everyone benefits from it. Here, here, now, let's pivot to, to Clay Thompson for like, a second. If there's anybody who needs help from Steph, it's Clay Thompson. Oh. Because he can't create for himself. No question. You know what I'm saying? No you question. You get what I'm saying? Well, plus there's a gravity effect that helps out Steph Curry as well. I, I right. think there's, there, it's not a coincidence. Poole went off and Curry kind of took a backseat last mm -hmm. night. And I think that there's there's something to that, right? Like, it's, it's a, there's a lot of moving pieces. As we look at different lineups, I think the one that I'm thinking about more than anything is how can I get Klay Thompson on the floor as more of a stretch four mm -hmm. offensively and defensively getting him matched up on the right matchup? It's not that he can't play defense. It's can I get him against the right guy at the right, right time, right. right? There's going to be like a Devin Booker. There's no. going to be times he can look Wednesday good at night. Wednesday he, night, we're going to see that. I, he can look good at him. There's other times where maybe I throw Moody on him. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe I throw Moody on him. Maybe, maybe I go with, with Wiggins on right. him on, on, on certain possessions. So, to me, it's more like matchup dependent, scheme dependent, form dependent, as right. in who's in form right now. But for me to jump the gun on JP, clearly there's a little something there. Can I see defensive effort for a couple of weeks? Yeah, that's that all I'm saying. Like before we have weeks. this crazy and conversation about him jumping into the starting lineup, let's just he needs to play better defensively before we can be open to that discussion. And, and let's be real about something. The San Antonio Spurs took a 20 to 19 lead with 354 left in the first quarter. All right. Despite Jordan Poole going crazy, the starters were losing with 354 left in the first quarter. Against some no namers. Against some no namers. Then you get the wickets pull up. All right. You get a pull up jumper. Mm -hmm. It's like 19, 20 feet. And then you get Jermichael Green hitting the three, and then you get Moses Moody hitting the three. So the bench players actually helped the Warriors flip that basketball mm. game and blow them out in the second quarter. So although Jordan Poole was losing his mind in the first quarter of 14 points in front of Jimmy G and George Kittle and Kyle Juszczyk and CMC, I do have thoughts on that. <laughs> I do have thoughts on that. But the second unit... Second unit, <laughs> you already know what time it is. Y'all know what time it is. Uh, the second unit actually flipped that game late in the first quarter and into the second. So although Jordan Poole went off, the starters are losing with well, 354 left in the first quarter. I think if you're just a reasonable person, you watch that game and you're like, boy, the bench looks great against the worst team in the NBA. Mm -hmm. Like, can we can we build on this, though? Right. Like, that's the question that I have. You had a great game. You blew them out. It was a feel-good. It's great for the soul. We love everything about it. Can you build on right. that? And, and that's what I'm hoping. And, and I saw some positives from Kaminga offensively and defensively. Right. Jermichael Green finally looking okay, I right. think, because of the spacing and the positional change. And 5 well, no, nobody's giving up on Clay Thompson. It's just sad. Who's giving up? For the up? last 25 minutes, you just heard both of us say he needs to start. So what the hell are you talking who's about? Who's giving up on him? Nobody's giving Look, up on him. Look, if they want to win a championship, selective hearing. if they want to win a championship, their top six guys all have to play great basketball. No doubt. Right? No doubt. Like, and, and pools included. It's not an either pools or. It's an included. and. And it, guess what? Poole's going to be exactly. in that closing lineup at times. He's going to get an opportunity to play with Steph and company. So, no, nobody's giving up on Clay Thompson. I know when the chips are down in the playoffs, I can count on Clay Thompson getting buckets. I'm not worried about Clay Thompson until I see it in the playoffs mm -hmm. and he struggles throughout the postseason. Then I'm going to sit back and say, you know what? Damn, maybe he is washed up. But I saw Clay Thompson last year at their two season hiatus. Play 32 regular season games and come up big in the playoffs for the Golden State Warriors. And some monumental game sixes. Monumental game fives. Ponte, Ponte. Close out games. Ponte, he's, a, he's a forever champion. Like, there's no question about it. And look, here's the beauty of basketball. We've got an inventory of games and minutes that allows right. all these guys to get out on the court and have various combinations that can work. And, mm -hmm. and they're experimenting. I just like the very little bit of positive that I saw from the bench last I night. Did. I and the question it. that I have is, is that a byproduct of the Spurs being terrible? Right. Or can we carry this over to some well, of the better teams in the league? Uh, big time positive. Anthony Lamb looks like a player. Anthony Lamb looks like a player. Here's my favorite part about Lamb. Forget the offense and the defense because right. he's hitting the three right now. He knows where to be on the it's floor. It's the communicating yeah, exactly. defensively. Exactly. That, to me, is the number one thing. They got another guy out there who's barking. I have a question. Is Iguodala going to play this year? And I'm not ripping him. I'm asking out loud. Some point, I think. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. It's not a my. You know, I. I don't know. I don't know. I, I know Anthony Lamb scored seventeen, but Anthony Lamb knows where to be in this reading react of course. system. He's a smart player. You mentioned the communicating on defense, telling Kaminga where to be on the yeah. offense. Hey, get down in the split. You got to set the Watch screen. Me. Yo, get back on defense. Did you think heading into this year you'd be interviewing in a post game, Anthony Lamb? No, I did not. 
So I did that. And you know what? I was impressed with, what he, with, with the way he came off oh, on he, television. Four-year four year guy yeah. out of Vermont, man. And he He's said, a smart kid. He goes, I've played a lot of basketball, yep. and I know what my role is, and I feel like when I'm out there with some of these younger guys, I'm the veteran. Like, he's clearly a seasoned guy. The way they found JTA, they might have found something in Anthony Lamb. They Just something. Not, they, not a great player, they, but a forget. good winning piece glue guy. People forget. This is how they found Gary Payton II. Exactly. Young Glove. Exactly. Everybody think about Young Glove during the pandemic season. And all of a sudden, this guy started defending 94 feet against Jamal Murray. And Molly and I looked at each other and said, damn, who is that? Oh, that's Young Glove, GP2. I know. So nobody is thinking about him anyway. Uh, and, and the Warriors cut GP2. We forget that after trading kept they cut him. <laughs> People wanted Avery Bradley. We don't forget. Remember that? Oh, I remember everything. Trust me. Some of you clowns out there. Let me stop. I, I, I don't mean to call you clowns. I, some some of you, you know who you are. How about I number, have receipts? I, 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 huh? uh, yeah, we got a break. Yeah. <laughs> I want to talk pink hair on the other side.